Do you know any good resurrection spells, by the way? I mean, um, just for fun. I haven't, like, participated in witchcraft in a while, so I'm I'm a little rusty on the on the spells, but, you know, anything just generally with, like, you know, a personal possession of a loved one, some blood of a lamb, you know. Innocent creatures always do well. Innocent creatures, you're trading their life for the blood of your loved one. Um, you can't go wrong. Yeah, you just have to get sense. the proportions right. It's like a, it's like baking. Mm, yeah, it's a science. It's a very exact. It is. Science. Yeah. You can't go wrong, but you can. <laughs> yeah, like all these, uh, all these um, hedge witches of late mm. are all just like I'm just setting my intentions and putting my energy. It's like no, no. It's all about the blood of that lamb. It's you need an innocent animal pleading for its life two seconds before you slaughter it. That's that's how these yeah. things go. Yeah, and I've heard the the sound, the frequency. At which it bleats also <laughs> is a contributing factor. Directly proportional to the strength of the spell. <laughs> you Correct. want a really high bleat. Like you mm. want you want something diabolical. Um, mm. But I'm sorry, I'm like, I look like hell this morning. I stayed up till midnight to play the new Pokemon. And if Josh Mervell were here, he would, I, I didn't see him online. He told me he was taking off all day to play it. And um, it's incredible. It's it's everything like that Pokemon fans wanted when we were kids, and we were like, we just want to like run around in the wild and catch Pokemon, and it's it's that. It's so cool. Oh, so it's you so just cool. ran around all night catching Pokemon and doing missions and side quests for characters in the village. You know, I've never seen a Zubat. Can you go catch me a Zubat that looks like this? <sighs> Fine, if I must. So I depart on my. <laughs> To part of my journey and find a zoo but that that's like exactly one foot five or whatever the hell they wanted and yeah it's very interesting it's it's less about the battling there's still battles mm -hmm. there's still battles but it's less about the battling and more about the exploring and catching and like documenting pokemon it's about like their ecology i'm obsessed that's amazing and um <clears throat> we're gonna have to get it then like it would be rude not to you know it would just be it would be rude and a mistake so and it would also be a mistake yeah like yeah. it's uh, it's so good i literally looked at like my friend list last night while i was playing online i have like 25 ish friends on switch mm -hmm. about half of them were all playing pokemon legends at the same time i think this is going to be a big game awesome um awesome. somebody shared um a meme that they created it'll become a meme um they shared a photo so it's like a side by side it's like original me playing pokemon in the 90s um this is what i saw this is what i saw in my head and it's a, scre a screen cap of the exact same thing and i'm like oh i think that's what kept me held me back from playing it as a child because i envisioned like an actual wonderland full of creatures and i didn't want to I didn't want just pixels. Yeah. And, and it was for, very like constrained, like, you know, like you, you could only go in certain paths and everything in the Pokemon game. So this is like, this is like open, open world. <laughs> like, awesome. it's, it's like Breath of the Wild, like when Al was playing. It's like uh, that. Okay. So this is going to have to find its way onto my Switch and then the family Switch. <laughs> but first yours. But first mine. Yeah. Because it's like, <laughs> mm, Am I going to spend that 70 to, uh, like, let's be real, it's like 100 bucks. Okay, am I going to spend that on this month's phone bill, or am I going to get Pokemon? I think we know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. And speaking mm -hmm. of answers, welcome to the Full Volume Podcast. Good segue. I am <clears throat> like 25% host, 75% um, animal, uh, G.I. Joe <laughs> Lee. That's my lead up. And I'm your other co host, the sniveling, the ever sniveling Harvey Brad. <laughs> and on today's. Oh, here comes the cough. Okay, let me mute it. Let me mute it. Hold, please. Technical difficulties. Oh, girl, don't get COVID. She is <clears> long <throat> and she gives you gifts for the future. Um, okay. 
All right. Episode five of Peacemaker entitled Monkey Dory. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, we are a show, just in case you're new to it today, we are a show that reviews. Oh, you cut out. Oh, oh it's did you hit the mute button. Part. So stupid. You're dumb so slut. Silly. <laughs> okay. Um, t- we are a show that reviews Marvel Disney Plus uh, television. Yeah. And since we don't have any right now, Marvel Disney Plus, uh, we're going to just hop on the Peacemaker bandwagon and we're five episodes deep. I'm, uh, I'm not uh, mad and, about it. And gagging. Mm-hmm. And gagging. Not mad mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, normally we just do Marvel, but like, this mm-hmm. has been fun. I'm into it. Yeah. So the last mm-hmm. episode, we uh, landed on, did we see that Mern, <clears throat> Mern is a butterfly? That's, That's the last how, thing we saw? That, yes, that is how the last episode ended. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then just a quick, really quick synopsis of what happens in this episode. Uh, the team... Um, let's say, okay, sorry. Uh, the last time we see Peacemaker, he is in his trailer slash home. Um, and he's just getting turned. As with one eagly, does. Yeah. With eagly and with uh, a captured butterfly that he has in a jar. Uh, this episode, we see him recovering from that hangover, as we all do. But maybe not anymore with eggs and Worcester sauce and... Just weird Tabasco mixes. sauce in there. Ugh. Like, yeah, I I once had a bartender serve me that during like a day after Caesar bar. Uh, that's Bloody Marys for all of you Americans out there <laughs> in Belgium. Um, yeah, in Belgium. Uh, do they? Yeah, okay. I feel like they have Clamato in Belgium. <laughs> Way in Belgium, right to us. <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> Do you have Mott's or is it like a totally different brand? Anyway. <laughs> um, so we see him recovering from his uh, post episode four binge. And he's what he just heads off to work. I mean, they, they play it for gags as they usually do. So he heads off to work and they kind of have a debriefing economist has created this whole slideshow um, and Mern is teaching them about the world the fun flappy world of butterflies um, how they are how they find hosts how they enter hosts <laughs> in a series of animated slides slides and, um, and then they kind of go off and they go off to the the factory which i can't remember the name of it it's some is it pan man pantai it's something like that Gla- but that's... uh glan thai bottling company oh okay yeah and that's, that's where it. john cena or sorry john cena <laughs> peacemakers hookup worked which i was like oh yeah why would she be a butterfly thank you for explaining it episode five mm-hmm. and that's when we get a very interesting again we're getting another action set piece this week it was great. It oh was my God. a lot of like snooping and, and espionage. And then it culminates into action. But we get Peacemaker teaming up with Adebayo. And then Harcourt teaming up with uh, Vigilante. Vigilante. <laughs> Who desperately wanted to bring a chainsaw. And they, cute. they, inf- they, cute. they infiltrate and gather um, reconnaissance. But Peacemaker had his x-ray helmet on. So he's able to see that pretty much all of them are butterflies. So it turns pretty violent pretty quickly, if I must say. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't warn her, and it surprises the shit out of her. Because as it turns out, when he snaps that thing into action, every damn person in the bottling factory is a freaking butterfly. Mm-hmm. So it's just shots all around. And then it culminates in them encountering a gorilla named Charlie. <laughs> That that was not on my 2022 bingo card. I'm sorry. No, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was like the best, the best free space we could have ever been given. But uh, vigilante is vindicated, and it turns out 
the chainsaw does come in handy because we get probably the gruesome, the most gruesome scene I've of CGI I have ever seen. Mm-hmm. An economist who is doing so much literal heavy lifting in this episode is just he just puts that chainsaw right through that gorilla and um you see it all yeah you sure do Mm. i'm surprised they didn't take back the the gorilla carcass with them yeah because i mean they kind of they use it as a way to tell you that animals can be infected by butterflies Mm -hmm. but also this thing is gigantic and mutated like why wouldn't their black ops operation slash if they're working for Amanda Waller, maybe want a giant gorilla. I feel like DC has a giant gorilla character that we're neglecting because we don't know as much about DC as we do Marvel, but (laughs) anyway, after that Mm -hmm. peacemaker invites Adebayo to come back home with him to drink. And that's where she kind of had, Advises him to be maybe a bit nicer to others because she bull- or because Peacemaker bullied the hell out of Economos earlier in that day, which we'll get mm-hmm. to. And that's when she also secretly plants a diary in his home, ordered by Amanda Waller, mm. <clears throat> as you may recall. And then after that, Adebayo returns to the office and she jokingly puts on Peacemaker's X-ray helmet. And then she, that's how she learns that Mern is actually a butterfly. And he attacks yeah. her in the streets. Cray cray. All right. So let's dive right into the fine details. We'll go all the way to the back. Oh, the or way the to front. The... Let's talk about uh, <laughs> Economist's uh, PowerPoint presentation. All right. Cool. So let's just address the giant butterfly in the room. They can get through you. They can get in you to every orifice. (laughs) Just imagine, like, what are the chances it's going to go through your bum? Like, I just, whatever. Uh, Hilarious. (laughs) Hilarious. Just like a very just distracting PowerPoint. The the other slide, too, with the human beside the chimpanzee. And and then, like, it was just completely misinterpreted by the team. Vigilante is like, oh, I thought the chimpanzee and the human were friends. It's like, no, no, no. It can also infect animals <laughs> and make you t- four times as strong as a chimpanzee, which to be fair. are smart and strong. And there's just so many threads that you have to follow to get this PowerPoint, apparently. And no one was getting it except for Harcourt <laughs> and Mern, who is like, do guys, guys, do we want to be here forever? <laughs> And then we get another, because we're apparently only going to get gold from Vigilante's dialogue. He's like, okay, I take my previous question back and replace it with ignoring the question altogether. Yeah, which is just like so, not sociopathic. Like Vigilante clearly has some sort of personality disorder. Maybe he is mm-hmm. a sociopath. I think he actually is a sociopath. But also he's just like socially awkward and it's hilarious. Mm. But and also, he addresses it a little bit. He's like, well, I, I, I would have more feelings about that, except for, like, I don't have them. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> yeah, it is. But this is also, this is used <clears throat> as an opportunity by Peacemaker. I mean, he's just ragging on this presentation and making fun of Economos. And we turn out it's not so much about the presentation as it is about Economos framing his dad, the White Dragon, for murder of the of the rocker chick from the first episode because basically that's how that's who they decided to frame to, to you know to get the scent off of peacemaker's trail and then peacemaker goes off on this rant and lists just an ad nauseum list of people that economists could have framed instead including ariana grande drake brad pitt doug the pug the red tiger from voltron Joe Montana, Joe Eddie Montana, Murphy, Joe Montana, Eddie Murphy, BTS, Eugene Levy, Danny DeVito, Alice Cooper, Bill Cosby, Optimus Prime, Cobra Commander, and the fucking cunts from Riverdale. <laughs> Which, burr, 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 burr. Burr, 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 Jason Derulo. That was actually <laughs> um, also improvised by John Cena, apparently. Amazing. Amazing. Um, he gets so many moments where you're like, damn, John Cena's funny. 
he he's funny. He's a funny person. Oh yeah, he was like very visual, like <clears throat> very um, all the visual gags too. Like when he hands that drink that he makes to Adebayo, and he's like, "What is it? Not good." <laughs> and she's very truthful, but he like you know very pridefully drinks his own. Is like, yum. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, like, no, he's. Sorry, go ahead. I got mm, you no, no, no. I think we we're about to say the same thing. Like, he's a very funny gentleman. He is. Mm-hmm. OK, so uh, th- this PowerPoint presentation is just this. This scene itself is just it, it also serves to build on uh, the character building of one character that's been kind of missing for all of these episodes so far, which is their group dynamic. So as they go off to the bottling company, they're all in like the secret ops truck. And we find out that even though um, Economist is being relentlessly pursued Mm -hmm. um, by Peacemaker, like he is just fucking coming for him all the time. All the time. Um, They share a love of 11th Street Kids. As, yeah, I was just looking that up right now. That's by Hanoi Rocks, right? Mm-hmm. And they are a they're a Finnish rock band, and we find that economists did an exchange in Finland at 14, which I found bizarre, but okay. <laughs> he looks like just the type that would have done an exchange in an Asian country, though. But also 14? Who does an exchange at 14? Is that a thing? I th- yeah, do you know what? Yeah, um, a lot okay. of the exchange students who came to me were from Germany. They never were from Asian countries, but you okay. could go young. Okay. It's always in the eighth grade. Yeah, right. I mean, it's like one of those like family swap things. I think like rot- Rotarians do it a lot. <laughs> okay, I stand corrected yeah. then. Mm, hey. You know what? Our parents are busy disciplining us and feeding us poison. So, mm-hmm. shake your no. <laughs> they, yeah not actual poison jeez they yeah. cared not for things like making sure we were cultured adults they wanted us to find out those weird things in like humanities 101 they were like you know what life's about hard work yeah that's it you want, yeah it's like you want to have an existential cri- I want to give this child the best existential crisis possible and I wanted her to have it mid semester in her first year. Preach. Mm, yeah. Do you know what? We made it through. We made it through. Look at us now. Mm, shining examples. Shining, reviewing Peacemaker on the full volume podcast. <laughs> Laughing for all the right reasons. <clears throat> <laughs> um, so, yeah, they, uh, they bond a little. Harcourt's heart grows just one size that day. Um, what what other little gems and nuggets do we get? Um, I mean, it's all shoot 'em up stuff in the in the bottling Su- factory. Yeah, super shoot 'em up. Um, mm-hmm. the yeah, it's I we get some good lines from from uh, vigilante. We get some real, you know. I, I get well, I was going to say, you know, we, we get a nice little callback to the chainsaw as well, because he really wanted to use a chainsaw. And then economist comes in at the last minute to kill Charlie, the gorilla with mm-hmm. a chainsaw. And some for some reason, <laughs> vigilante's upset about it after, like actually like pulls Peacemaker aside. And he's like, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> and he was like, he was not joking about it. He was serious. So I thought that was revealing. Um mm. Like, okay, that's that's what you're worried about. That's what makes me think he's got a bit of a personality disorder. It's like you just the quirks aren't right. Like or there or there are quirks rather. Like he's just he's just a little off kilter. We've we've, you know, come to realize with vigilante, but I, I'm here for it. I think he might be my favorite character. Yeah, me too. Um, so fun fact. Uh I think which we brought up earlier in casting, Freddie Stroma wasn't always uh the one to be playing uh vigilante oh yeah who was it um don't know don't care would have been terrible (laughs) 
He just looked. I looked at the, a photo of him. I was looking at the wiki page, and I was like, "Wait, that's not Freddie Stroma's name. Um, that's someone else. Uh, who is that?" And apparently, he he had scheduling conflicts uh, that didn't allow him to be part of the show. So they last minute, last minute cast Freddie Stroma. And I feel like I'm going to find it while we're talking. Um, okay. I feel like it would have been different if it was a different actor because there's something about his like sort of Aryan rapist glasses look that totally Jeffrey Dahmer yeah works for that that character and it's so scary I believe it is oh did somebody come in and change the Wikipedia page overnight I was going to say, I only see Freddie Stroma's name here. Mm-hmm. They did. Uh, recast. I'm just going to look for the word recast. Why Peacemaker Vigilante was recast. Okay. We'll find his name soon enough. Uh, somebody named Chris Conrad. And I think uh, I googled this gentleman's name and I saw the list of like stuff that he was in. He looks very <sighs> he's he's uh, he played young Hercules. Wait, he oh. played Jason in Young Hercules. Sorry. OK. Yeah. And he has a very. Mm, American. I say yeah. Um, I mean, he's 51. He looks 32 and he's like, he kind of, I, I want to say he has like CW face, C- which, <laughs> which is like my, I bet sli- you, yeah, I bet you that's like an insult that they throw around in West Hollywood. It's like you have CW face. Yeah. You like you, you look like you could play the cousin of the brothers in supernatural. Let's <gasps> cast you. Oh, I thought that it was like an insult saying, like, you look so obscure. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. No. Oh, yeah. Well, they, you know, like they have that sort of they have an obscure look, but it's polished. Mm, OK. Yeah. So it's like you put this guy up next to the rest of the cast and it's like the cast looks too perfect. And also. He's like big, sort of wide like John Cena, and I feel like having two tanks on screen would have been like too much so remember the scene in the um i think it's the second episode where he's in bed with peacemaker and the the woman that they bedded yes. that was actually the original actor that's his body that's not freddie stroma's body oh you can tell it's no it's definitely not freddie stroma so yeah it was the original actor yeah so I just watched an interview that Collider did with James Gunn and he does speak about like there was a question about the shooting of Peacemaker because it happened um, while he was shooting the newest Guardians okay. or a little bit before. And he did mention, but not going to detail, that they had to do <coughs> – there was some changes and reshoots. Mm-hmm. Oh, she she having a coffin fit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why I didn't prep myself with water before we started is a mystery that only Egyptians, the Egyptians know the mm. answer to. Okay, so anyway, okay. Um, yeah, we got some great moments of comedy. We get some great character building scenes. Uh, Harcourt, who's been taken to sitting in a bar alone. Uh, took a picture of all of them singing the 11th Street Kids song. And she starts a group chat called the 11th Street Kids. And she sends the picture to, uh, she sends the picture, I almost called him Dye Beard, Economist. She sends it to Peacemaker. And she sends it to Vigilante, who is working in fennel fields. I can't hear you now. Weird. Hello. Hello. 
and it's not my mic, but also the mic you so generously donated me has been really weird. I think it's on its last legs no. because it's been failing a lot. Oh, <laughs> sweet baby angel. Blue snowball. Um, no, I was going to say, so yeah, Harcourt sends that picture to their group chat. And because of that, I vote that we title this episode something very special. Mm-hmm. I vote we title this episode the merman emoji if possible on spotify <laughs> i agree i agree fully i don't know if it's possible but give it a shot mm. because that was the most iconic random response ever and it's like just perfect for this like unhinged character of vigilante i love it mm-hmm. and um it's so cute because it's uh who does it does economist say he's like why merman emoji yeah. And uh, um, Peacemaker's like, he just loves that emoji. <laughs> just like him to know his best friend. It's the yep. cutest. Oh, yeah. Do you want it to just be the merman emoji or the merman emoji included? I don't know. Whatever, whatever you think looks the best. I, I'm, down, I'm down for whatever, but it's got to be included because it's just so iconic. It's an in joke. Oh. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Oh, so. And on another cliffhanger, another crazy cliffhanger that yeah, leaves me wanting more. It looks yeah. like Adebayo is about to bite it. I know. Yeah. Mer- Mern is uh, not taking any prisoners there. So I, I don't know what's going to happen. I hope there's somebody that runs in at the 11th hour. Mm-hmm. Well, who knows? I just, I don't know. So, yeah, it does not look good for Adebayo. Yep. So until, I mean, we got a lot of things to do um, until the next episode drops. Brent's going to play Pokemon. Exclusively. Yes. I'm going to have a lung transplant. <laughs> oh. So many things. Um, what do you think is going to happen? What are you going to do until next Thursday? Let us know by dropping us a line at the full volume pod at, sorry, full volume pod at gmail.com. Don't put the word the in there. It won't come to us. Okay. You can find the rest of all of our episodes on the comicbooksyndicate.com or uh, you can catch all of these episodes, all of our past episodes on YouTube uh, on the Comic Book Syndicate channel. Just search Full Volume Pod and oh, there we are. Full video color. Wait. Full color video. Life in Technicolor. We move. Look. Le- <laughs> the pictures move. It's magic. We're just circling right back to magic. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been your host, singing and dancing. And uh, just one and wheezing. G.I. Yeah. Jolie. And I've been Harvey Brent, who needs to take a nap and then recharge and go play Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I have a full photo shoot later and a store to run at the same time. I'm going to die. Oh. But until uh, next time, keep it loud. Full volume. Bye-bye. Bye.